Today on the channel, we're talking a little bit of McFarlane DC. As you guys know, we got to get a deal, and we've got the demon, we've got Robin, and we've got Batman. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another McFarlane Toys DC unboxing and review. And today we've got Robin, the Demon, and Batman. But for all your McFarlane toy needs, hit up Big Bad Toy Store, link in the description below. And as we know on the channel here, I dabble in the McFarlane DC. I'm not the biggest, biggest DC fan, but I do like some cool action figures. I do have my favorites from DC. But I'm nowhere near a completist, nowhere got to get them all type thing uh, with the DC McFarlane toys. I do find a little bit of inconsistent figures, way too much Batman for my liking. But they do have some diamonds in the rough as far as I'm concerned. And they got some cool ones that definitely piqued my interest. And these three piqued my interest for different reasons. Uh, of course, we're going to do this like we always do it. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see where it goes from there. But the reasons I picked these up were got to get a deal. They were interesting enough figures, and they were very, very cheap on clearance on Amazon for these ones. This demon figure, $8.99. Robin was like $12.99. I think he was $11.99, this Batman. And I really just like the Batman for the Joker head in the jar. So we'll see how cool that one is. But let's kick it off. Let's start with the demon. Now, I know the demon character, but I couldn't tell you anything about him or how he operates or anything like that. But when I do see this, I always think of two of my favorite heavy metal bands of all time. The old school new wave of British heavy metal band, Demon. Just plain Demon. And if you guys follow along on Instagram at the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson, every Friday my figure hunting video, I always play the band Demon in uh, the post I do. I absolutely love it. One of the most underrated albums of all time. Check out Demon, Night of the Demon. Man, I absolutely love that album. Every single song in there, I absolutely love. I've listened to that album a million times. They should have been just massive, but hey, they weren't, and that's the way it goes sometimes. But when I also hear Demon, I think of my favorite current day or newer heavy metal band, and that is the band Night Demon. Absolutely love Jarvis and the Boys. Night Demon, I've seen them in concert so many times. Whenever they come to the Midwest, I follow them around. I love, love Night Demon. So if you want some new heavy metal you've never heard of, check out Night Demon. Absolutely favorite of mine. But let's talk about Demon in the package here. DC Multiverse, the Demon, looking all uh, almost like a Demon Knight, like a knight in the old, uh, the olden times. You know, he looks like he should jump on a horse or something like that. Nice familiar blue background, of course. You got the Demon there on the side. What's it say? From Demon Knights. Well, a different way of spelling. <laughs> that just sums it all up. Demon uh, Demon Knights. Uh, you see that right there? So that's exactly what he looks like. So that's interesting. So, uh case closed i guess uh, so mcfarland did exactly what i thought he did it looks just like it and he called him that and very impressed by that very impressed with myself even uh, but there it is on the back of course we get a little action figure shot we get a little cross sell on the bottom and that's it they save the blurb as we all know they save the blurb for the card on the package that's just the way mcfarland does it he's got his reasons i'm sure see you later get out of here now can i get this card out it's always tricky getting these cards out. You don't want to bend them. Of course you don't want to bend the cards. Nobody likes bent cards. I remember that from my old card days way back, way back in the day, of course. And I'll fish out this stand later. Got some more right here. See you later. The Demon, Demon Knights. Real name, Etrigan. Jason Blood, once a mortal man who lived centuries ago, was bound to Etrigan after the Demon was summoned by none other than the wizard Merlin. Oh, Merlin, quite the magician, as we all know. Jason was rendered immortal and granted the ability to swap places with his demonic counterpart upon saying the magic words. What are the magic words? Uh, though Jason has tried many times to exert his will over Etrigan while he is transformed, the demon is too powerful to be completely contained. Still more often than not, Etrigan, despite his nature, isn't interested in the greater good, even if his motives and methods remain suspect. Interesting uh, story there. I uh, don't really know the demon, but it sounds kind of like a Jekyll Hyde type thing. Uh, kind of a good, bad type thing going on. I mean, it, it writes itself at this point. Uh, but let's get up. Oh, I guess I should show the plastic prison. Let's be consistent, Kyle. Plastic prison, looking just like a knight, like I said. Very interesting. Got a big weapon here. Got a big sword. Pull that bad boy out. And there it goes. It's the only accessory. Now can I get him through? There it is. Pull. There it is. See you later up high towards the sky. Got a little bit of mess here. All right, the demon is out of the package. And now... 
like I said, I don't know a whole lot about the demon. Oh, we got a little bit of a loose left arm there. Not terrible. Not as bad as Hal Jordan a while back, but still a little loose. I've said this before with DC. They always have the sharp points on him. That's why they're 12 and up. But he's got pretty sharp points here and on his head. I mean, that could do some damage. You got a little brother out there. You swing one of these at your brother or something. Man, you're going to be doing some injuries to that kid. Uh, so a little bit dangerous here. Uh, but very cool. Very medieval knights, like I said. And then I like the demon look to him. I mean, it looks like a demon you'd think of. Very knight of the demon uh, from Demon, the band I talked about earlier. Uh, but very cool. Very uh, knight-like. I'd like to put this guy on a horse. And McFarlane does have a Build-A-Figure horse out there. I, I want the horse, but not the figures. Uh, maybe they'll sell that horse uh, separately. I know the Witcher, which McFarlane does, has a horse coming out. Maybe I'll pick that one up just to see how it goes. And maybe he'll fit on that horse. Who knows? Beautiful cape here, of course. Cape season coming to an end. I'm not sure the exact date, but I believe it is sometime in March. But uh, the demon rocking his cape. Very cool texture on here. Nice flaps and folds going on. A bit of a purple cape, which really does... Uh, go well against the gray kind of scaling throughout this whole body. Almost Aquaman type scaling going on. And then he's got the big armor. He's got the forearm guards, the shoulder guards, the knee guards, the feet guards. But then he does have just bare feet. So it's funny. Uh, I'm going to put all this armor on, but guess what? I'm going to leave those toes bare. Nobody's going to hurt my toes. And then somebody chops his toes off, you know. Uh, he does have the toe articulation we're so accustomed to. The double jointed elbows, double jointed knees, very tight ratchets, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, you can turn at the waist. A lot of posability with this one. Like I said, I don't know the demon a whole lot, but this is cool enough for me that I did feel it warranted a pickup. I think it looks really cool. And for $8.99 shipped, uh, that's the definition of got to get a deal. Uh, I'd take almost any McFarlane toy just to play around and see what I think of it for $8.99 shipped. Worst case scenario, you buy it for $8.99, you open it, you have it for a while. Six months later, you say, you know what, I'm going to sell this. You can definitely at least get your money back. I, I can guarantee that. A bit top heavy on this one. Uh, but very good. I forgot to mention the red little chest plate here. It reminded me a lot of Batman when I first saw that. Uh, then he's got the red, the red belt there. Almost like a satanic uh, cross thing going on there. But not quite. Not quite. Dancing the line, I guess you'd say. He does come with a big weapon here. Uh, it does have nice sculpting to it. But it is all one color. A nice grayish silver. Uh, but I guess this is his weapon of choice. And very hard to get into his hand. I'm going to have to figure that one out too. He's got... That's one thing about these McFarlane. They say they always have the sharp pieces and sharp points to them. The, the demon is no different. He's got nails on him that are very sharp. And I'm just going to have to work that in because, man, he's cutting my finger up. Uh, but very, very cool, the demon. I'm here for it. $8.99, picking this one up all day. I'm here for it. So let's check out Batman and Robin next. All right, next up, we're going to go with Batman from The Last Night on Earth. Not familiar with the story, not familiar with this Batman. It is a Bane build-a-figure. Now, I do love Bane. I remember buying the comic book of Batman and Bane when Bane broke him in half. I had that back in the day. Uh, this isn't quite my Bane, though. I've seen this build-a-figure in the past. He is way too big and different. I want a more traditional Bane that looks like Jeep Swenson for you wrestling fans. Uh, give me that uh, version of Bane. That's what I would like to see, but... Anyways, there's Batman. We got the Build-A-Figure pieces. We got the Joker head. That's what I bought it for. I really thought that was cool looking. And like I said, it's only like 11 12 bucks on Amazon shipped. I couldn't pass that up. Batman from the last night on Earth, as it says there. On the back of the package, nothing too special. Shows how to build Bane if you're so uh, wanting to. And then you got the cross cell down below. I don't know. We'll see. If I find the other two on clearance, the other three on clearance, maybe I'll build Bane. Most likely not. Most likely I'll just sell the build the figure parts for a couple of bucks and call it a day. So let's get old Batman out of here from the last night on Earth. And there it is. Oh, these are always hard to get out, too. I hate that. Okay, come on. Work with me. Or don't. Or don't work with me. I'm just, just going to go on the old-fashioned way. We'll see if I can tear that out. Maybe. Bear with me, folks. Bear with me. It's a challenging process. See you later up high. There it goes. Batman, Last Night on Earth. Bruce Wayne, six two, 210 pounds. Uh, dystopian future. Bruce Wayne wakes up in Arkham Asylum. He still has his youth, but he was never Batman. Bruce dons his bat cow, breaks out of the asylum, and accompanied by the Joker's animated severed head, begins a surreal journey to solve the mystery of his past and find out who's responsible for destroying the world. Encountering both friends and enemies along the way, the Dark Knight quest through the devastated landscape may prove to be his last adventure ever. So that's a bit of an intriguing story, uh, an interesting play on things. Uh, I'm here for that. Maybe I'll look into, more into that. I don't know. Maybe I won't, but a little more interesting than I assumed it would be. Uh, but then we got Batman right here. There he is. Now I understand this character a little bit more. 
uh, plastic prison action. So he comes with, I was like, what is up with this Batman suit? Well, he's living in Arkham Asylum. So he's got uh, kind of like a, a straight jacket is what it is, basically. So he's got a straight jacket on. Pull him out. See you later. So you can see the flaps on the back, the straight jacket where he gets strapped in. So very, very interesting. He grabbed his uh, his cowl, and I guess, what's that W, or is that supposed to be bat wings, or, am I, or is it W for Wayne? I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, uh, but very, very cool. It's like Batman straight jacket Batman. It makes me like this figure a lot more now that I know something, and, and that's the key, and that's what I think McFarland is missing on a lot of their toys. If they had that blurb or a little blurb like that on the back of the package, I'd say, oh, okay, this makes sense to me, because we all got to be honest, unless you are an absolute Batman diehard, you don't understand what all these Batman figures are or what they represent and stuff like that. So a little blurb on the package will go a long way for sales and future sales, I think, for McFarlane Toys. But man, knowing what I know now, he was in Arkham Asylum, I like this one. It looks like a straight jacket. So I didn't put two and two together until I had that little piece of understanding. So that's very cool. Obviously, all the articulation we get, all 22 points. Uh, with the McFarlane figures. He's got his bat cowl going on. Uh, this is about the size I like my Batman figures too. He's not super skinny, not super big. He's just right sized, and that's what I like with this Batman here. He does have the god-awful ankle little uh, balls there. I hate that. That's my least favorite thing on McFarlane toys. Uh, sometimes they hide them, sometimes they don't. Here, unfortunately, they did not, so that is a bit of an eyesore. He does have the straps on the back, almost like a cape going on. He does have a utility belt on the side, which it looks like you can probably put this in. Yes, you can. So he does come with a, like the billy stick or bully stick. What do they call those things that the police officers use? And they go down the cages and all that kind of stuff on the bars. Uh, but you can't put that on the side, so that is his weapon. I think that is very, very cool. A nice dark wash to this guy. More so on the bottom than the top, which is a little bit strange. you think it would be a little bit more even toned, but it isn't. Uh, but very cool. And then he's got the uh, leather straps here. Obviously, none of this. It's all sculpted in. But then he's got, of course, the bat, uh, the bat, whatever, the the arrow, not arrows. I don't even know what you call these. The, the gauntlets on the side, whatever they're called. You know what I mean? These on the side. He does have those going there. Uh, but very good. Boy, I, I really turned around on this one. I, I bought it just because it was so cheap. Now I don't regret it at all. I actually like this one a whole lot more, and I'm actually intrigued by the story. I'd like to see how that story ends up. I'm sure there's a trade paperback or something along there, something I could read uh, to get more of the story on him uh, very easily. Uh, then the Bane pieces, you got two big old fists here and then a very small head. That's one of the things I don't like. Your fist shouldn't be like four times the size of your head. So that I lose it a little bit on this Bane Build-A-Figure, uh, like I said, as I start throwing pieces off the table. Ah, that's the way it goes sometimes. But then you get the Joker in the head, and that was one thing that really interested me right off the bat. It almost looks like a lantern of some sort. So you have him wandering through the desert or the dystopian wasteland. He's carrying Joker in his head. I'm sure Joker's got all these wise cracks and stuff like that along the way. Uh, very much like Cobra Commander on Roadblock's back in G.I. Joe the movie. I'm sure it was kind of something similar to that. But I'm here for it. I like this. Uh, I have not done this big of a 180 on a figure in a long time. Can I get him in his hand, though? And I'll do it for the glamour shots. Uh, but I haven't done a 180 like this in quite some time. But I do really like the looks of this Batman. I think it came off very, very well. I think it's very good for what it is and, and a lot cooler than I anticipated it to be. So can't beat that and you can't beat a deal, that is for sure. But now we got to turn our attention. Last but not least, we've got Robin. All right, the final piece of the McFarlane unboxing today is Robin. Robin, no stranger to figures. You know, of course, there's been so many different Robins throughout the years. And I believe this is Tim Drake's version of Robin. I'm not up on all my Robins, but I believe how that is. But I always like the littler Robins. Uh, I just feel like he looks good. And I'm actually going to put him with my Batman from the Three Jokers. I'm sure it's not accurate, but I feel they look good in that dynamic. And I did like that wave set of Jokers we unboxed. And, of course, we unboxed Batman and Batgirl from that as well. But let's take a look at old Robin here. There he is. He's got a big sword in there. I didn't know Robin was a guy playing with swords, but hey, here we are. It's 2022. He can do what he wants. Then he's got the famed Chinese stars, and I've told a lot of stories about Chinese stars in the day. They were all the rage in the 80s, and kids had them, and kids used them against each other. There were some dangerous days with the old Chinese stars, including uh, two brothers I was friends with. They got grounded when I was there as they threw Chinese stars at each other. What a day to be alive that was. So whenever I think Chinese stars, I think back to that. But you got Robin there looking only like he can look. 22 points of articulation, of course. The McFarlane logo, Robin, all that fun stuff. From DC Rebirth, whatever that is. And like I said, I'm no expert on this. And then on the back of the package, you got the cross sell. You got the big artwork up top for Robin. So let's see what it says. 
Doesn't say anything. Okay, I thought it had a little blurb up top, but it was just some warnings. Pull him out of the package. Gonna get this out. Always a struggle. See you later. Let's get Robin here. Get this card out. We'll fish out the stand later. See you later. Robin. Oh my gosh, it's got War on the Peace back here from Teen Titans Rebirth 2016. Ah, oh, this is Damian Wayne. Damian Wayne here. Robin is Batman's protege and crime fighting partner. More than just a sidekick, Robin is an accomplished acrobat, a skilled fighter, and a sharp detective in his own right. Though rigorous and constant training, Robin maintains his physical edge, which, along with his knowledge of martial arts, makes him a formidable match for even the most experienced criminals. Although he does not possess any superpowers, his discipline, training, and intelligence make him the natural leader of the Teen Titans. And I think most people know Teen Titans Go from the Cartoon Network. I mean, my daughters love that show and have always loved that show. And that's Robin to them, which is just blows my mind because it's so zany and crazy. It just doesn't feel like uh, real Batman and Robin type stuff. But it is what it is. There he is in the plastic prison. Let's pull him out. Let's get this sword out of here. Let's get these Chinese stars. Oh, boy, I love a Chinese star. Uh, a very underrated uh, weapon. Like, I can't tell. If you didn't live in the 80s, you don't know how big Chinese stars were. Every kid was like, oh, man, the Chinese stars, Chinese stars. Uh, and I don't think there's quite that love for Chinese stars in this modern day and age. I bet you if I asked my daughters what a Chinese star, they'd say, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, they would think it was something at some restaurant, probably. Oh, we're buckled in. Buckled in as usual. Clip. And now we're not. Get Robin out. Maybe. There it is. See you later. Goodbye. All right, Robin and his Chinese stars. Very animated like here. This almost looks like Teen Titans go uh, Robin a little bit in the face. Um, very much so. Got the traditional Robin colors. You got the black, the green, and the red. Unfortunately, you do have those ugly ball joints on the feet and a little bit on the hands. Uh, but it does give more articulation, but it just takes my eyes away from the whole figure on this ankle articulation. But a little figure, much littler than most of the McFarlane toys we've gotten in the past. Uh, but still fairly cool, if you ask me. I like it for a little figure. This this works okay. He's got a little half cape going on. He's kind of got that cartoon mean mugging look to him a little bit. Kind of a frown kind of off to the side. Uh, that's what I think of when I think of a lot of cartoon Robins as far as Teen Titans go and stuff. He's got the fancy, whimsical black hair going on. Nice green mask with the white eyes. Uh, very, very small. A little looser. I've had quite a few loose McFarlands. Maybe I was just lucky with getting really tight ones in the past, but these have been fairly loose recently. Um, some looser than others. And then I got some bum articulation on this arm, it looks like. Ooh, that was scary. That was scary. I thought it broke. Uh, we got some very weird articulation on this left arm. I don't know if you have this at home, if you have that same thing, but it looks almost, I don't know, it just looks a little bit messed up to me. Got the traditional Robin R on his chest. Got to have that if you're Robin. Got his nice skirt going on. Of course, we did mention cape. We are in the thick of cape season, and Robin knows all about the cape. He's got some big laces going on. Uh, very interesting there. 22 points articulation. I think I probably already said that. Uh, he does come with the Chinese stars, of course. And then he comes with this big sword, which seems a little strange. But like I said, I don't keep up with the product here. Uh, so maybe that's his uh, new weapon and stuff. I mean, he is just a little acrobat is what he is. But that's a big sword. The sword's about the size of him. It looks like he's uh, going to go to some fencing competition or something along the way. And then you get the Chinese stars. Uh, I'm not sure if those are the easiest to hold on to. But I guess he holds on to them just fine. Uh, but those are very big Chinese stars. Usually Chinese stars were just kind of little and you zip them like a coin almost. Uh, a little bigger than a coin, of course. But this looks a little bit bigger than the traditional Chinese stars I dealt with as a kid. But still, fairly cool. I'm happy I picked up this Robin. I felt I needed a Robin in my collection, and this is the one I think looked the best to me. Uh, and, of course, when he's on sale, got to get a deal. That's when old Kyle swoops in, so that's exactly what I did. So there's Robin. We did the Demon. We did the Batman. A mixed bag, but for being cheap and on clearance, I felt like I did okay here. And I especially like the Demon figure the best. Uh, maybe it's because I like the bands Demon and Night Demon. Uh, but there's just something about that one that was a little bit more magical than I thought. Maybe it was the $8.99 price point. But couldn't go wrong with either of these figures. All three of them uh, were worth the money I invested in them. I'm going to put it that way. But what do you guys think? Did you pick up any of these? you pass on any of these? Any thoughts on these? Let me know, of course, in the comments down below. Make sure you give this video the old thumbs up, uh, like you're on happy days or something like that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the old notification bell. Follow me on social media at SirPaul64 on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson, and Patreon. Don't forget Patreon and ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. So for a little DC McFarlane action, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.